What's going on, YouTube? Well, it's been a minute. We had uh, a lot of cars come into the collection over the past few weeks. Kind of sporadic. I got a lot of mainline cars that have been coming out. Been really busy with projects at home, too. So, another reason that the videos have been slow. But I've also been on kind of a couple other projects going around, too, in the diecast world. So, I was able to get a lot of stuff accumulated. Um, new auto worlds are hitting the shelves uh, so I got a few of those we're gonna share and also have M2 I found recently and I found the opening parts matchbox couple of good ones um, gonna be able, I've only seen them once in the past few weeks and I was able to get them um, you know a lot of the peg warmers are out there too but so we'll look at that as well and uh, you know just awesome auto world very excited for that stuff um, no new green light Still waiting on a few things to come in and uh, got some Hot Wheels. So I think we'll do a video on Hot Wheels. Definitely got a couple of those recently. I got lucky. Um, was able to fill some holes and also get the new stuff. So take a look at that soon. But let's get to it. As you can see, the background's a little bit changed. Um, we're going to do an extension. Old Meg's place is going to get a little bit bigger. And I'm in the process of doing that, another project. <laughs> so, phone core. Um, kind of did a front office style there. Uh, what I'm waiting for is trying to plan the roof out, trying to make something interesting. Right now, i got all my contractors on site, so they're kind of hanging out there right now. Uh, but uh, let's get to it, guys and gals. We got uh, Matchbox moving parts. So these cars, again, way out of scale, but they're cool. First one we're going to take a look at. Look at this awesome car. This is an 82 280ZX. Opening parts harkens back to the uh, Matchbox with the metal base back in the late seven or late yeah late 70s, 80s time frame. They're doing these Z cars. They did a black car with the gold trim. So this is kind of an homage to that kind of old school casting. You can look at Matchbox. There's a couple of websites if you do some Googling. Basically, you can look at the olden day Matchbox, especially if you're trying to fill in cars that you remember as a kid that you want back in your collection. It's a good place to start. There's a lot of cars I've jogged my memory that I've looked at that was in the deep recesses of my brain, and I saw I saw a few of them when I pulled them up online. and. This was one of them. I remember having one of these cars. And then when I saw that the Matchbox moving parts are going to do this. And of course, it's an entirely new casting. But it is similar the way the molds are done. They did have the bumper as part of the base on the car that was metal back in the 80s. It does have the opening doors. These were upright probably the smoothest just because the construction is metal. A lot of the moving parts have moved on to plastic because of the complexity and the cost associated, of course, with casting and this and that. But Matchbox and Mattel, um, they definitely figured out at least they can do doors still in metal. <laughs> Unless they're rear doors. The uh, rear door is a little bit more difficult because the hinge can't, you know, it's in the middle of a car instead of in the body where they can bury it. Simple tan interior, but still nice. You can pick that out with detail. You take this car apart, screw it out, and be able to customize it. A lot of guys have already done that, put wheels on it, things like that. Um, but it's a good, it's a pretty close livery to what you could get in 82. They had a stripe package, not as bold as this, but they did have stripe package. It's got the crest on the front. This was still labeled a Datsun in North America. You know, this was a Nissan, otherwhere. Other parts, but this was Datsun. 82, they had taillights like this. I think they were striped. They were kind of like a striped job. So this car hasn't been touched. This is exactly what it comes like out of the package. It's got really cool card art. The moving parts on these, <clears throat> um, they come in standard card size, even though the blister is a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can get this to focus. So yeah, 82... Datsun 280 ZX and take a look. So it's kind of like the standard background, but they put the moving parts on there. They do the factory wheels like that, and a bunch of garbage on the back. But cool, I like that. It's got the window up on the picture. 
no windows on this one. There's the card art. All right, so simple card. Really basically a normal matchbox. Good thing about this is, unlike some of the other ones that have been coming out, this one's a basically a $2 car versus being a $4 car on some of the other ones. Plastic base. These cars were V6. No, this wasn't the 6. I think this was, still, yeah, this was still an inline 6, and they went to a V6 engine after this car, I think. I'm pretty sure 82 still had the inline on it. So, yeah, inline 6. You get like a stick shift with this car automatic, and they come pretty well equipped. I mean, back then, the competition, even though, I mean, this car is cheaper, was the Camaro and Mustang type of stuff like that. And then, of course, the Toyota. Toyota had a Supra. Two plus two car like this. I think this car shows just a two seater, but I know during this period this car went from a two seater to a two plus two. They extended the wheelbase on it, kind of looked a little silly. And then they went to the modern one from uh, mid 80s on. Went to that one until the 300 ZX came out. So this is kind of like the last hurrah for the Z car until they changed it and then discontinued it for a while. So. Nissan. All right. There's that. Good look at that. Um, next one. So this is kind of a funny little car. Uh, a little bit undersized. The Tesla. I got this car because I knew it was going to be collectible. And the fact that I had the gold wing doors, I just had to check it out for myself. The other good thing about this one, unlike the Z, is they spent the, the Z doing the tampoing for the stripes and everything. This one has the headlight grill fog lights. It's got the, even though they're matchbox wheels, they do have big wide spokes like this for Tesla, so that kind of looks pretty good. And the taillights are done. So I like that. I thought that was pretty good. It says Tesla right there. Let's see if I can get, there we go. So, I mean, that's really cool. I, I sat in one of these. Uh, a very interesting vehicle. Sometimes it feels unfinished, even though the dashboard's amazing with that huge screen. It's like a huge iPad basically in the car, and that's it. Uh, so the concept's cool. Definitely fast. You know, you can have a one with a lot of torque on these electric engines. Windshield goes all the way up there. I, I forget if it really goes that far back into that roof line. I can't remember. I don't know if it was split glass where windshields here and then this would be tinted glass I forget but that's quite big I'd say the other thing about this matchbox is the the width on the wheels the track they could have kinda did that a little bit better Looks, doesn't really look like that in real life <laughs> looks like it's a train one of those vehicles that go on the train tracks <laughs> alright so let's get to the why I bought this car um, is these doors are plastic of course because you really can't do that type of mechanism in metal anymore <laughs> either it would break or it would be too big in there unfortunately but uh... look at that it's all plastic so it's clear plastic and they tamper on the red which they do a good job it does have these skylights in it too that's on the real car so I thought that was interesting and since the base is part of the arch, that looks good too. So, you know, if you change the wheels on this, I bet it would be a lot better. But uh, I kind of got it for the novelty. It's definitely, you know, even for matchbox standards, a little goofy looking. But uh, still, nonetheless, I think it'll be collectible and I kind of like it. So, there we go. There's our Tesla. And uh, card on it on that definitely is more flattering than the real vehicle. <laughs> So there it is with those big turbine wheels. It's the Model X, first SUV from Tesla. Another noteworthy reason probably to get it. So I have a few other electric cars in the old diecast collection, but they're always mainline stuff. They're never anything more than a dollar really for me. Dollar or two. All right, so another brand um, that we're going to take a look at is M2 and a lot of times it's hard for me to shell the money out for M2 just because of the quality issues although the bodies are really good I always will pick up their 4x4 Ford trucks and also their other regular cab pickup trucks I get those they're really good um, sometimes their cars are good a lot of times they're, they're bothersome they're not correct they have a little bit of an issue with them uh, we did take a look at that 59 Cadillac which looked really great well here's another one 
This one is uh, definitely uh, a good Oldsmobile. Um, 164 scale. There's been a ton of 442s done in 164 scale. This is probably one of the better ones just because of the amount of detail it has. This one would probably be worth the $6 car, I'd say. And uh, it is white. And also, I like white with blue interior cars. I don't know what it is. I even like it reversed, too. I like a blue with a white in car, too. <laughs> but that to me screams 60s, 70s, having that turquoise or that. Um, sky blue interior. They also would have some of them be metallic, sort of. So, this depends. They did have the pale blue, though. And this really is a pale blue. My lighting in here is a little yellow, but um, I mean, it really, really felt when I looked at it. And of course, you know, they're in that acrylic case. So, you get to just see it kind of like that. But you could see, you know, and also the steelies. I'm a sucker for having steel wheels and uh, poverty caps, dog dish wheels, center uh, hubcaps, whatever you want to call them. I love steel wheels, cars, and um, this is no exception. This looks like one of those 442s that you could order without all the jazz on it. Basically, these cars did have stripe packages by 68. This is a 68 car. I'm pretty sure. I forget. <laughs> it's been a minute since I opened this one. Um, no, it's a 70. Sorry, 70. Your 68 was the first year for that type of grill. Of course, they changed it a little bit. But uh, anyway, so yeah, 7442 car, which again, they were getting pretty loud with the colors and everything. So in 70, to have a car ordered like this, the guy really, or gal, definitely wanted the car to go uh, more than show. And uh, 442, no matter how you ordered it, uh, it was definitely a mover. Again, 442, we had a four barrel carburetor you had four speed and you had two barrel exhaust that's or two uh exit exhaust two full length exhaust pipes so dual exhaust and that was the, what it the base was you can add stuff to it. of course you can option these cars with everything this would probably be you know uh a fairly well optioned car in terms of power just because it had rear mirror which I think was a stage package on these cars. I can't remember, but you know, hood pins and all that. You could get that from the factory. But basically, this car was made to move. It did not spend the money for the old rallies or any of that because that was an option. So this is base old steely. You could get that on 442. It just wasn't that prevalent. The other good thing about this, which I like a lot, of course, it's metal on metal base, but it has the windows rolled up. And I really like that. I think that's neat. I think it adds a little bit of detail to the car that usually is not prevalent. The other thing is the the detail on the seats. They're thin. They're not like huge, thick plastic slabs. And they also have that blue color. Um, quarter window is done really good. You can see how the window's riveted, spun riveted on there. And there's the tail lights. It has dual exhaust with the trumpets. They had the trumpet exhaust tips on those Oldsmobile cars with the duels. I, think, I can't remember if that was an option or not if it just came with the 442 on 1970. You know, the option packages and the trim lines would change kind of what you would get. It also has those Goodyear polyglass tires, which I like. And Oldsmobile has four-spoke steering wheel. So here you go. Right there. Yep. pretty good love that it's got a little bit of a um, you gotta be able to uh, take off that trim so basically the car comes apart I'll show you the base in a minute but you can kind of file that down you can see it's got a little bit of a a um, uh, plastic basically a tab on there that didn't break off other than that I mean it's really done well this does have an engine in it. Let's take a look. Big block olds. It's 455 motor. I think these cars ran 10 compression back then, something like that. 10 to 11 in that range, maybe a little bit higher. Could get air conditioning, power brake on this car. Could get power steering. Car came with three, three speed auto. Also had a four speed tranny. I think you get a three speed on this one too. On base type 442 because again it was mostly the drivetrain package. That was four speed, yeah. 
I think you get them an automatic though. Even though it's four four two, you get a three speed auto. I don't think you get a three speed uh, stick, but you get definitely get a four speed. Probably two different four speeds, close and wide ratio. That was usually the you know to choose, and then of course the rear ends could change gear sizes. I love M2 tires; they're very good. Square shouldered, so it looks good in scale. Metal base it comes right out. So basically, you know, with these M2 cars, you take out the screw and it comes off, and the base comes out. I mean, you can play with that interior, clean it up a little bit, but I didn't touch it. It's all stock. So good looking car. Again, the color combination definitely stood out to me because it was a rare package, and it was just something that was really good looking. So definitely picked it up. Love the white with the blue. So 1970 442 car. Very nice M2 machines. Great detail. Very good looking car. Okay, on to more vehicles. All right, so we're going to get into Auto World. Um, I wanted probably most of this series besides, you know, they, I think they had, what do they have on this one? They have, uh, well, they got the 62 Impala SS, seen that, and they had the uh, 63 Dodge Polara. That was a 500 Max, so it was a 426 car with a cross ram in it. Um it's cool. That's the only one that seems to be around. I was able to catch a few others on vacation over the weekend at places I usually don't go to, so I got lucky. But uh, for the past few weeks, I've been trying to hold off also making this video because I did want to get the wagons. I don't have them yet, so we'll get those eventually, and we'll do a wagon roundup. Uh, probably better. Probably for the better. That way I can do all the wagons at once and kind of spend time on it again. But... But I was able to find the Cadillacs, um, another Impala. I do like that car with the steel wheels. Again, I'm a sucker for that. And I finally picked up myself, because uh, this guy, for some reason, there was no other Auto Worlds at this one store, but there was eight GT40s, so I don't know why. I mean, I don't get that, but anyway. So I picked up one, finally, because it is a good car, and it's the only GT40 incorrect 164 scale that I'll probably own, because I have others. But... Uh, all right, so we'll start out with the older one. This car is uh, an uh, older release. They did this car a year, a couple years ago, GT40. This is it in the package. It looks good. I like the dark blue Golf almost more than the light blue Golf. For some reason, I don't know why. But uh, it's a package. Here's your facts. You can pause and look at that. And so premium series here four. I don't know. I forget what it is. Let's tell us back there. Yeah. Where's the? Okay, so yeah, that's last year. It's an eighteen copyright. And so yeah, last year stuff. That's when the seventy five came out, which we went over in a few videos before that. So, so let's take a look. Just uh, what I do is I again I'll score it with a blade. That way I can just take it off in one piece like this, and take the car out. Pop this back in. Love the box. I save these. They get their own little area in storage that I have the boxes. But uh, so here it is. It's a great looking car. The only really reason that I didn't buy it the first time when I saw it was the tires are bothering me I mean I got one that was kind of better but the line on the tires is kind of squarish on some of this and you can't see it too well on camera let's see get it down here but yeah I don't know they were bothering me when I was looking at it so kind of threw me off for a minute and then uh I don't know, I saw it again, and I was like, you know what, it's a great car. I love the GT40 anyway, so I might as well get one. So here it is. It does have clear um, lens detail, which I love. It's, you know, another thing with Auto World, there's no plastic uh, add-ons like green light. I mean, the whole car is metal. Even the, uh, the winglets here for the front splitter, it's all metal. It had the cooler detail here. The brake duct. I think that was brake duct and a radiator. 
Vince. I mean, the car is just done good. There was no, it, I mean, they took their time with it. It's difficult to do it in this size. I mean, look at my thumb. <laughs> so, I mean, the car's tidy. I mean, we'll get it here. Let's get a Vista Cruiser behind it. Just because I had one. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. You know, a guy was using a big black Ford in this generation GT40. Big block Ford engine. They did run the small block Ford too. On this car, I mean, look at that. Do you imagine? You know, and that Buick would be, or that <laughs> Buick, that Oldsmobile would be fine with the 350 Rocket Olds in it. And everybody, you know, that one's a 455 car, but that, you know, 354 bar was still pretty decent in a heavy car like that. And he had a 427 Ford motor in that little tiny car, space frame, tubular chassis type car, a monocoque construction I mean unbelievable so it did great things again beat Ferrari Arnold does a good job with this car they really do they even have the transaxle done with the exhaust so I mean just awesome car I think they did other liveries I don't remember if it was just golf or not um, they did run a black car that really looked good Hopefully they'll do something like that if they haven't released it already. Can't remember about this one as much. But just the detail on it is just really, really good. It's definitely worth it. Just as even as a 164 scale model, that price point rolls great too. I wonder if you can pick up the squareness of that striping. No, which is benefit for you guys. <laughs> I think the front one's a little squarish. But uh, has the knockoffs done very good. It's got your carburetor detail, or not carburetor, I think the fuel injection, actually. So you got your stack injection there. It's very nice. So, very excited to have that in the collection, actually. You know, now that I've taken it out and seen the scale and everything, it's a great car. Um, I set it up there, actually, with the Gulf stuff on my shelf. So, there she is. Actually, you can see kind of the difference there with the Oldsmobile. It's kind of funny. Alright, so we're going to get some more meat and potatoes. We got uh, a car that's really cool. Um, this is a 1966 Chevrolet Impala. Uh, car came base as a Biscayne. Went up to an Impala in the trim line. And uh, this is on top of the heat. This is an SS car. So, you know, you'd have a big block in this. I think 66. You can probably make comments at the below if you want. Uh, it's a 409 or a 396 car by 66. I can't remember which. Because um, it was kind of like the changeover. When they get to the mid to late 60s, they went over to the change. But uh, regardless, it would be a big block. Um, or it could be. It's probably a 396 car. Let me see. What is it? Oh, it's a 427. So, <laughs> which was an upgrade. Uh, very hard to get. So, in this guy's, in this package, guys, as Auto World, I, this is the first time I really read the package, you know, because they can do any fictitious car they want. This one happens to be a Mark IV 427 V8 with 425 horse, which is probably underrated <laughs> from Chevy. And um, 15 different colors. So, this one is Marina Blue Poly. A great color. I love that color. Any of the poly cars that are blue, uh, whether it be lighter to this darker one um, I love it so there she is there's the box good looking got the turquoise and uh, so like version I think version A has the turquoise on this series um, and uh, version B is the yellowish one pretty sure because I saw that and we'll see that on the Cadillac so vinyl top car with the steelies really great combination the other one of this I could not find yet is the the black one they have a black one of these with the blue obviously I'll try hunting that one down that's gonna be hard I think when I get the next three the wagons and the other one I'll probably show them um, just because but we'll have to see time will tell so there it is look at this thing good looking other people have seen it you know on YouTube other reviews but uh, this one just looks a lot better like this is probably the one I probably would have bought first if I seen it, it took me a while to get the 66 car they have released these a uh, for a while 
Um, for comparison, this is what you usually see, which is kind of like your normal SS car with the full wheel covers. And and these were the more of the popular ones. They'd probably option a car out a little bit more since it was such a heavy car. You know, putting a big motor in it, you know, you can race them and, and go down the drag strip, but <laughs> they wouldn't be as efficient. Although back in the mid-60s, you know, a lot of times the biggest engines were in the bigger cars. Um, they weren't putting the biggest, biggest engines in the intermediates at that time, at least widely done. So in SS, you can go down, pretty much get it with the biggest engine. So awesome car. It's got the steelies on it. You know, they've used these wheel on this car on other vehicles, namely the Kingswood station wagons. They've used these type of wheels. They just look great on this. They're, it's a different tire than the previous release too. So and there's your great chassis detail from Auto World. Just really excellent. All metal. No plastic on this car except the interior. I mean the bumpers are cast in. So they they really know how to do dyeing the dye process for these molds because they do really well. They do a very, very good job. And either they come out rough and someone's smoothing them down or the dyes are just that good. Because usually there's not very many mold lines on these cars. And body lines are always pretty good. Let's see if we can get that hood open. I think I had it open. Yeah. So, typical Chevrolet engine bay of the time. It's got your black inner fenders. Orange block on this car. So... But Auto World for the for the one sixty fourth cars at this price point has probably the, some of the best detail. You know the air cleaners are separate a lot of times. You can actually see the detail in the valve covers and where the position of it is relative to where it's supposed to be in the car. I mean it's it's pretty good. So I, I'm just a I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. See if we can get some more. Yeah. It's difficult. It's a little difficult. Tampo process is excellent. Let's get a little close up here. You can see there, they got your uh, engine badge right there. Super Sport. This one's got the uh, body spear done in silver. Flat paint for your roof. Here's your poly, so you can see the metallic in it. You can see how smooth that casting is. You know, a lot of times there's a division line here with the casting where the mold goes together. And it's uh, cleaned up very well on the car. It's a very common area for small cars to be done. Headlights are painted, grills painted, tampoed on the license plate. This is all there. Great car. Looks like a stick shift car, which is cool. Small, and then uh, you got your dual exhaust. So, good stuff. Very, very nice car. Full size Chevrolet. Um, definitely would love to have that car. So, there she is. Very pretty. Goes along with the Steely theme today, with that and the Olds that's next to it. So, there we go. Okay, so what we got next? What we got next? All right, save the best for last, at least for me. I mean, I am a big Cadillac fan, and we got some beauties. We'll do them both at the same time because basically it's the same car. So this is 1967 Cadillac Eldorado. I believe 67 was the first year for Cadillac Eldorado front-wheel drive. I don't think it was 66. I think that was left for a Tornado. If I'm not mistaken, I guess I can correct myself later, but <laughs> for all intents and purposes. What's cool about this, again, it has a vinyl top, makes it a little bit more accurate feeling to me than just having the steel roof cars um, that were on the earlier assist, or early releases. And they're putting on the gold and white wall Vogue. Basically, there's like Vogue type tires. So they got the gold stripe with the white, which makes it look very good. And you can see that's got the color baroque gold poly 
And there's some more facts. E-body platform and VR all the time. Uh, shared. Development of the Cadillac began way back in 59. They did want to do front wheel drive for a long time. Yeah. So that, that whole concept, you know, and they had to make the transmission and do all this and that. So it took them a while. And there's the back. Of course, you can get an ultra red. There's the Buick. Of course, everybody's getting out from under me right now. And then here is version A. Okay, that was version B. There's version A. Version A is the Summit Gray Poly. So it's gray over black with dark red. Yeah, same tires. Seems like they try to do something other than colors in this one. With the Cadillacs, it seems like they just did, you know, new tires on them. Kind of like when they did the DeVille cars. When they had the DeVilles. So there's that old beauty. And then we'll get the gold one out. The Baroque gold. Alright, All right, so I'll flip her out. Get this out of here. Real quick. Okay. So, Cadillac. Look at these bad boys. Actually, I think these colors are a little bit more subdued than last colors that came out with the aqua and all that and the red. And when they're doing these metallics, the um, detail, the casting, and even the signal minders here, I think that was what those were. You could see your uh, turn signals go off in there. Look at that detail. Just excellent. Of course, these are big Cadillac engines. Huge. You can see what I'm talking about in this Cadillac. You see, look at that casting. A deep. It even has the the uh, supports for the um, inner fenders going across. It's got the correct color. It's got the size air cleaner. It's got the separate detail for your core support and radiator. You got your generator showing, you got your uh, upper intake or upper uh, rad hose on there. I mean, everything's there. And it's funny, too, because you know, when you saw these front wheel drive cars, any of these big Cadillacs, you know, the engine would be way back here, and you could almost stand in this car. Uh, a lot of the bigger ones, maybe not the front wheel drive, but you could put your legs in there, kind of work on it still, because you know, all this was just fender. All this was fender. Engine would be all the way back there. On a front wheel drive car of this vintage, um, and the transaxle kind of there off the flywheel. You know, this was a longitudinal mounted engine, it wasn't transverse. And they have the axle shafts going into that. So, very cool setup. You can see it there, how it looked. Very interesting. And, um, yeah, torsion bar suspension torsion bar went all the way back almost to under the front seat so quite a distance kinda get that front wheel drive controlled uh, and it was a body on frame car too so a lot of interesting stuff back then Cadillac look at that bad boy so this is the gold baroque and then we have the gray summit I kinda like this car I love the interior that really dark red beet red color there you can see the tires as you've seen these type of tires on the other Cadillacs that came out but it looks very good on the 67 Eldo had hideaway headlights back then so they'd pop open when you turn the headlight switch on and you got your crest Cadillac crest right there in reef and Eldorado, so very, very finely detailed. Look at that Eldorado on the quarter, right there. You can see it on this one too. Of course, the gold car, you know, that's not gonna show up as easily on the gray one. Definitely could see it. And then you got it on your deck lid right there. So the other good thing about this, you know, I can't say as much or too or not enough, I'd say. It's just how good that casting is on this car. It's got that rear vent right there that's molded in. It's got the peak on the trunk done. Just perfect. It's got the curve on the trunk lid. It's got the point of the tail. The tail light's done correctly. Just a great car. Huge exhaust on this car, too. Ran a single exit on these cars. 
this thing was enormous really really big exit on it so Cadillac and just to kind of review some of these you can see what they they came last year and I put thin white walls on one of them but they came with the wide whites which I'm not a fan of the other thing that you can do I did on some other cars just to bring out the detail you can see right there is the I black wash this one I'll probably follow suit with this you can see how much better the wheel covers look when they have a little bit of depth provided by them and again that's just a little bit of testers paint a little bit of uh, acrylic paint and done with a uh, cut with water you can just put that on there with a brush and wipe off the excess and it definitely gives more detail so those are some cars I wanted to show you some vehicles we got some Hot Wheels stuff coming um, but uh, Auto World always 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 uh, top of my list uh, definitely on the hunt for the wagons they're going to be tough to get but I'll find them always do just got to wait for the first round I guess to be picked through but uh, we took a look at some good ones today and uh, Matchbox, Auto World, M2 more to come till next time